If you are on Linux and want complete control and syncing over various RGB devices, this is the way to do it. I am using OpenRGB, uh, which is a godsend because my keyboard is Corsair, my mouse mat is Razer, my mouse is Glorious, my board is MSI, and this would be a nightmare on Windows, let alone Linux. So luckily we have OpenRGB, which is a free and open source application. Um, it runs both as a application here, it can also run as a daemon, and it can run as a command line interface, which is the best thing possible because I can literally just have it set everything to a static color in my login script. I don't even have to touch the program. But anyways, I'm going to run you through how to install it, how to get started with it, how to install plugins, how to get your sick RGB setup, uh, everything from this sort of rainbow effect to audio visualizer effects to all of the different plugins available. And um, here, let me actually show you the site here. I will put the links for it in the description. Um, but you can go ahead and get it on the AUR if you're using anything Arch-based. It's just under open RGB. Um, or you can get the Git version as well. And if you want to do effects, you're going to want the effects plugin here as well. Um, if you're not on something Arch-based, you can just go ahead and get it on their page. Let me find the downloads here. Here's the downloads. So yeah, you can get an app image or you can get um, a dev file or an RPM if you prefer that. Um, it's actually also available for Windows and Mac, but I'm assuming you're probably not on Windows or Mac if you're watching this video, so. <laughs> Anyways, um, we can also check out what devices are supported directly on the website if you wanted to. Um, chances are your devices will be supported. I mean, they support everything from like your typical keyboards all the way to like Philips Hue and Nanoleaf. So um, support has improved drastically in the past few years, but yeah, you can double check if your devices are supported, but chances are they probably will be. Um, and here's the page for plugins themselves. So this is the effects plugin I was talking about. If you want to do, you know, stuff like rainbow trippy, uh, this is what you're going to want. Um, and you can actually download it directly and you can download all the plugins directly on the site if you don't have access to them in uh, your package repositories. And to install a plugin manually, you just open up OpenRGB, go to, here, I'll make this here so you can see it. Go to settings, go to plugins and then just click install plugin and it'll open up a file picker and you can just pick the file and then it'll show you what plugins you have installed. Um, this is the only plugin I have since it's the only one I need, um, but there are other plugins available. So there's this visual map plugin. If you have a bunch of different devices scattered around a room, you might want this because that way you can actually map out where they are. So if you're doing some sort of like a gradient wave effect, you can actually get it in the right order for your devices. Um, there's a hardware sync plugin and a fan sync plugin. Um, if you want monitoring via RGB uh, of how your temps are looking, like if your CPU gets too hot, you could have everything go red or something. You could do that. Um, you can also control fans directly from OpenRGB if you wanted to do that. Um, and there's also this OpenRGB scheduler plugin. So if you wanted like dimming at night, um, you could do that with a plugin, but I actually prefer to do that just via a cron job, or you could do the same thing with a system D timer. Um, because there are CLI options available for OpenRGB, you can just uh, run a single command and have it change brightness. So um, if you want to do it the easy way, I would just do it via a cron job. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to run you through this application quickly. So when you have it installed and if you have uh, installed the effects plugin to get extended effects, you'll have this effects tab. If not, you won't have it. But the default page is this, just this devices thing and it'll show what you have. You can rescan devices if needed. Um, and you can just, you know, set a color if you wanted to and click apply all devices if you just want a static color. It'll also show you what modes are available for the specific piece of hardware. So for example, my mouse mat here has like a spectrum cycling mode, like hard coded available. So I could toggle that on there if I wanted. Um, and you can also save profiles, load profiles, delete profiles, etc. cetera. Um, the settings here, if you go to general settings, you can actually set a profile on exit of the app. So if you wanted to just set, you know, a static color and then just completely quit open RGB, you could do that. The easier way to do that is just in the command line though. And I'll get to that in the end of the video. Um, but you can also set this up as a daemon if you prefer to do that. And you can just do that by running open RGB dash dash server. That's probably the easiest way to launch it as a daemon, but you can also set it up uh, with systemd if you wanted, you can set it up as a systemd service here. So I'll link this in the description if you want to do that. Um, and you can also set stuff like minimize on close. Um, if you want dark theme, here's where to set dark theme. 
um, and other useful stuff. All of this uh, Philips Hue devices and stuff, I don't have any of these, so I don't really know how to do them. If you do have them and have any tips for them, feel free to leave a comment talking about that. Um, and then, yeah, you just have supported devices, uh, which you can check directly in the application as well, if you wanted to, and then the plugins. Um, anyways, onto the effects, which is the fun part, of course. There are a ton of effects available in that effects plugin, and of course you have profiles as well, where you can load and save and delete profiles. And um, for each of these effects, you can also load and save and delete patterns. You can, like, if I messed with this and I wanted to, you know, make the, the speed, um, uh, mouse. I wanted to make it super, super slow. I could then save this as a pattern if I wanted to. Um, but anyways, onto the audio visualizer because that is obviously the most fun effect. It's just under effects and then audio and then audio visualizer. Well, these are all audio visualizers, but this is the main one. And I can just toggle it on and go ahead and check what I want it to apply to. And if I unpause my music here, we have an audio visualizer. Um, and to set this up, you're just gonna wanna go to audio settings and then set the audio device. Um, if you don't have a monitor or like a capture set up, uh, you will wanna set that up. So I will leave command in the description for how to do that on the various different audio services. Um, it'll also by default have like a microphone if you have a microphone. So um, it's, it's literally showing me talking now, which is kind of weird. So I'm gonna change that back. Um, and then everything else here is pretty much what you would expect. You can play around with it to get, you know, a different looking audio visualization effect. But yeah, amplitude is the main one. I always increase amplitude a bit just so it looks better on a keyboard. Um, you have low pass and binning, uh, you have EQ if you want that, etc. And of course you can change, you know, colors if you wanted to change colors here. Um, I don't know, what, what music do we have? If the music was a little bit louder, we would, we would have better colors here, but anyways, whatever. You get the idea. That's how to set up audio visualizer. And then there's, you know, all sorts of other effects. I mean, you have all the basic like rainbow stuff, um, you know, double rotating rainbow. You can do custom gradient wave. You have like more simple effects, you have special effects, you have much more advanced effects. Like zigzag was actually kind of cool. I was looking at that earlier. Um, but yeah, all sorts of different effects with it. Um, anyways, on to the Cly options here. So if I just run the command open RGB and just put a dash dash help, um, well, running the command alone is just gonna open the GUI. But if I just do dash dash help, then we'll get this little help menu here. Um, which has all sorts of stuff. So I was saying how I like to, in my login script, just set everything to a static color um, because contrary to popular belief, I do not really like RGB. Um, I don't know why I said popular belief. I don't think anybody thinks that I like RGB because I've literally never used it before this. Um, I just wanted to actually show this program since I have been using it for a while. I just use it to make everything white uh, because I'm boring. Uh, so yeah, I just do open RGB uh, dash C F F F F F F and then oops, be uh, like 50% brightness and then it's just white at 50% brightness and I just run that on login. So whenever I boot up my PC, it'll run that everything's white easy. Um, you can do other stuff with this open RGB command here. Like I said, you can start it as a daemon if you wanted to. Um, you can view and list devices and you can do everything, all of your RGB control via the command line if you wanted to do that. I mean, you can look at different device modes and you can even save and load profiles if you wanted to do that. Um, of course, you can mess with config and auto start as needed. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention is that if you do have an MSI board, um, I have an MSI board here, you might need to do a slight workaround to get it working um, without having to run OpenRGB with sudo. Um, so yeah, your MSI boards might not work unless you are, uh, if you have set up this workaround, then it should work. But I just wanted to point out with this, uh, make sure you are actually running it in the right location. So um, this command is the correct command to do, but um, for me, this was not the location OpenRGB was installed to. So if I just do which OpenRGB, you'll see I actually have it in user bin OpenRGB um, as expected. So I would wanna run this command on user bin OpenRGB. Um, considering that I do have an MSI board. But uh, yeah, I'm just mentioning that because that annoyed me for a while before I actually went to the FAQ page and read that that was how to fix that. Um, anyways, I will link all of this in the description. If you have more tips and tricks for OpenRGB, let me know. Uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. And everything's gonna be white again next time. No more RGB, I hate RGB. Anyways.